you so much. You know, young people, it don't hurt to revive some of those songs. Uh, that, this is beautiful. Thank you all so much. We remember those who have led those songs that walked before us, who are now with the Lord. But we praise God for his goodness, for his mercy, and for his unfailing kindness that is always available to us. And uh, we thank you this morning, choir, for the musical selections that you have given. Let us go to the Lord in prayer as we prepare for the message this morning. Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, it's again that we come before your presence with thanksgiving in our hearts for all that you're doing right now in our lives and what you continually do. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you this morning, O oh Lord, once again for a reasonable portion of health and strength. You enabled us all to arise, dress ourselves, make our way once again to this house of worship. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Father, it's again right now, as I speak unto these thy people, I ask once again, if you will, just to hide this your servant behind the cross, that those who are here might see thee and not me. Father, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my strength, my redeemer, in the name of Christ our Lord, we ask it all, amen. For those of you who have your Bibles with you this morning, I won't worry your patience long, but we're going to the back to Exodus. I promised you all we were going back to this chapter, first chapter of Exodus, and I want you to see some things and how that God, if you hold out, deliverance will come. That's the topic in this particular area. If you hold out, deliverance will come. I know that each one of us go through trials, tribulations, and there are tests that we go through as far as life is concerned. Don't want you to fail the test. I want you to succeed in the testing that God places in your life. And I want you to know that you continue to walk by faith and not by sight. And uh, um, I want to show you something. This morning we sang a very beautiful song. In the hymn book, it is commonly known as the Negro National Anthem. Lift every voice and sing. The writer of this particular hymn that is in the hymn book is James Weldon Johnson. Some of you know of him that have been through high school, those of you who have been in any studies whatsoever as far as African-American history is concerned, you will know who he is, a great poet. He was the one who wrote um, and, and did the creation, God Stepped Out. Uh, he's the one that wrote Go Down Death. There are some others that he wrote that are very beautiful. But there is a verse in this song that I, 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 I listen to, and each time it is stated, I think about our history, and I think about the history of Israel. And when I say our history, I'm talking about not only African-American culture and the African-American people, I'm talking about the history of the United States of America. Listen as it states in here. It says, lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Get it? Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. Let that sink in. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee, lest our hearts Drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. 
the history of Israel is so similar. The history of our United States of America is so similar. The history of our people is so very similar. What do you mean? We have forgotten from whence we have come. There are blessings that we stand in today as to where we take for granted the struggles that it took to get us where we are today. Israel is the same. Exodus is the beginning of the moving of a nation of people from slavery to freedom. Went into the land of Egypt because of a drought. Went in because everything back home in the land of Cana, the promised land, had dried up. Went in because of the fact God wanted to reveal to 11 brothers what they had done, 10 brothers rather, what they had done to their younger brother and now the fulfillment of what the younger brother had told them is coming to fruition. Now they're having to go down and buy grain. Now they're having to go down and not realize the prime minister over the affairs of Egypt is their brother. They don't even recognize him. So many years have passed, and yet they see him. And when he finally reveals himself to his brothers, remember what happened? They thought at that time he's going to get even for what we did. But remember how love and compassion overflowed and they had to understand as to what their brother told them. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for the good. And now they stand before him and having to bow before the prince of Egypt. The Pharaoh is the only one higher, but all of a sudden they stay too long down there in the land of Egypt. As they have stayed too long, now what happens? Joseph dies, all of the brothers died, and the generations thereafter them are now still in the land of Egypt. And all of a sudden, the Pharaoh that is raised up, that is now the new ruler over the land of Egypt, does not know the history behind these people who are there that are multiplying and they're getting greater and mightier than the people of Egypt. They're growing in leaps and bounds. Every time it seems that a woman has a baby, it's a male child. Every time when that child is born, he is being instructed of his heritage. He is being told about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, but yet they are in bondage. They are being thrust upon them work after work. The workload is increasing, and the more the workload increases, the more children that are born into the family. The Pharaoh then, let's see if you hold out, y'all hear me? Deliverance will come. Sometimes you don't even realize the way that the deliverance is going to come. Sometimes you're looking for it to come one way and God chooses a total different way. Somehow, some way, if you hold out, if you pray, if you believe God, if you stake your claim in the fact that he is Lord, he's going to come through. I don't care what it is you're going through. This morning, even with our singles ministry, and Samaya actually mentioned the fact you got baby mama drama and you got baby daddy drama and all this stuff going on. If you hold out, 
You got to pray your way through a lot of things. You can't exact vengeance for vengeance. The Bible says, God said, vengeance is mine and I will repay. That's, right. That's, right. That's not in your hands. You got to pray and you've got to ask God. You've got to be guided by his Holy Spirit. You've got to do things right. You've got to train up your child in the way that they should go, that when they are old, that they won't depart from it. There are too many parents who are letting children run wild. That's the reason why we do what we do here. There are some surrogate fathers and mothers that are standing in the place where fathers and mothers should be standing. And we're trying to provide the right instruction. We're trying to provide the right thing as to the way that God would have them to go. We're trying to show them Christ through and by the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we live, the way we give. We're striving to do that by faith. We're not trying to put on a show. Religion is, your Christianity is not a show. And if you think it is, you're here for the wrong reason. Your Christianity, your walk with Christ, your faith in God should be real. And you've got to learn to pray. And I'm here to tell you, if you haven't learned to pray, uh, just keep living. There are things that will drive you to your knees. There are circumstances and situations that can happen in life that will drive you to God in prayer. And you get real, real about your praying situation. You get real about your commitment. You get real about your relationship and your commitment to God. You'll get real. But you've got to believe by faith that God is and that he is a rewarder of those who will diligently seek him. Let's look at the word. What happens? Remember, we went through the first part of this chapter. And down in verse 11, it says, Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them and, uh, uh, with burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities, Pitom, Ramses, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, kept on, kept on having children. Families just kept growing. And in that day and time, it was a blessing to have a great big family. You have 10 or 12 children and uh, 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 about 15 of them, you got uh, uh, 13 sons and two daughters, you blessed. We wonder how you gonna feed that many people in that day and time. That's a tribe right there. It says, and they were in dread of the children of Israel. And here's the next part that happens. And God is so good. God, if you hold out, you hear me, God will deliver. I promise you he will. If you hold out, deliverance is gonna come. So the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, in brick, in all manner of service in the field. All their service in which they made them serve was with rigor, hardship, not letting up, that boss that just won't let up. That person who stands over your shoulder, you're trying to do it to the best of your ability. You're trying to provide the best service that you possibly can. And don't think things have changed so much. There are those of you who find yourselves in those situations in this day and time. And when you find yourselves in that situation, what I've said, if you hold out, deliverance is going to come. You got to continue to pray. Don't get even. You know, talk about me as much as you please, but I'm going to talk about you when I get on my knees. I'm going to cry out to God. I'm going to believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Look at what the next plot is. 
in this scenario as far as families that are being built is concerned. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives of whom the names of one is Sapphire and the name of the other is Pura. And he said, when you do the duties of the midwife uh, uh, for the Hebrew women and you see them on the birth stools, if, they, if it's a son, you need to kill him right away is what he's saying. Kill him. But if it's a daughter, let him live. In other words, we don't want no more little boys running around here in this camp of the Israelites. You need to kill every one of the boys and say it was stillborn. That's what you need to do. But thank be to God. Look at the next verse. It says, but the midwives did what? They feared God. They went above the power of Pharaoh. They went above the power of the president. They went above the power of the CEO of the company. They went above the power of that boss that's on your back. They went above the power of the supervisor. They went straight, direct to the one who could do something about the problem. And that's what you got to do sometimes. You got to go above what you think is powerful. You got to go above that person that you think has some authority. See, men, men and women and, and, and CEOs and presidents and governors and mayors and council persons only operate as pawns in the hand of God. That's all that they are. It's right to be correct in doing what you do as far as uh, uh, your job is concerned. It's right to honestly give a hard day's work for a day's pay. It's right to do it the right way. And when you do it the right way, God will reward you. He sees in secret and he will reward you openly. They feared God. And they didn't do as the king had commanded them, but they saved the male children alive. And so the king of Egypt called the midwives and asked them, he said, why have you done this thing and saved the male children alive? Why is it that you did this? We, I told you what you needed to do. I instructed you on how you were to handle the situation when these women went to having children. But the midwives said to Pharaoh, and God is so good. They said, hold up, Pharaoh, listen. He's, they said, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. They, he, they said, they are lively and uh, give birth before we get to them. They what? They lively women. Now they, they spurting out babies like it's going out of sky. And before we get there, that baby has been born. And they holding that baby and cuddling that baby and hearing that little baby cry before we ever get there. Look at what happened. Therefore, God dealt with the midwives and the people multiplied and grew mightily. And so it was because the midwives feared God, it says, that he provided for uh, he provided households for them. What are you talking about? He blessed them. See, when you walk right, when you talk right, when you live right, when you pray right, when you sing right, when you're not putting on a show, God will do something greater for you. Hello, somebody. Then what you're able to do for yourself, God will bless your household. God will bring peace. God will protect you in the midst of the struggles as far as life is concerned. What do you mean by that? See, these women were supposed to be killed because they disobeyed the order of the head man of the country in that day and time. They disobeyed civil authority. But let me tell you something. Civil authority is all right. And as long as it lines up with the word of God, we're supposed to obey it. But when it goes 
most contrary, we serve a true and a living God. And we continue to walk by faith and not by sight. If you hold out, deliverance will come. If you believe God, something will happen. When you trust him, you'll learn to shout. You'll learn to praise him. Folk will think you're crazy, but that's all right. I got a crazy type of praise. I praise him in the midst of my struggle. I praise him in the midst of my sorrow. I praise him. Regardless as to what I'm going through, because I'm going to hold out till deliverance comes. I'm going to do what y'all just said. Hang on in there may not seem right right now but hang on in there believe God and trust him if you trust him for one thing trust him for all hang in there and believe God because I promise you he will deliver you out of every situation I don't know what you're going through but I'm here to tell you he's going to deliver you he may not come when you want it, but he's an on-time God, like they said, too. He'll come through on time every time. Believe me, trust God in the midst of everything that's swirling around us right now in this world. Hold on to his unchanging hand. This morning, if you're here, and you're without Christ, if you're here and you're without a church home, if you're here and you don't know Christ or you strayed from the church, we want you right here in this family, in this church. We want to help you to grow in Christ and we want to help you plant your feet solid in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now. As the choir shall sing, the doors of the church again are open to you by letter, by Christian experience, by candidate for baptism. If you're here, come. May we stand as the invitation is extended. Our deacons are coming to accept you.